With me today is Marie Louise. She is my first guest from the Netherlands. You guys know I've had people from the UK. I've had one from Israel. So we're just doing a global tour here right from my little home here in California. So thank you for joining me, Marie. Thank you. I'm really happy. Yes, thank you. We are going to be talking about, she's very passionate about improving elder care and improving elder care by also using art. So I'm going to let you tell me your story your history so people can get to know you and then we'll talk about elder care okay great well my name is marie louise ross from Donningen, and um i started with loving elderly on a young age um i had a really good connection uh contact with my grandmother she had uh in that time 20 uh grandchildren and i had a really special band with her um and I felt her always in her in her emotions, and uh, I had also a good relationship with her husband, my grandfather. Um, and I feel felt like always, yeah, a kind of feeling different than other people. I felt like always, yeah, this this is something what what I where where I came here for. Uh, um, um, how do you say? in the in where i was born for and i felt like this is a goal for me um i want to do something with with elderly uh, and i knew that in a really young age already and um but my grandfather he died three, on a really young age he was i think he was 71 and he got a stroke but before he got ill i um uh, he had also an, an earlier stroke and became in a wheelchair and i was really um uh, patient with him and um um i knew exactly I, I felt like really natural how i have to behave to him even when i was a kid and uh, my grandmother um i was always i came every week uh, uh, to have a dinner with her and uh, and uh, we love to watch uh, old movies uh, like Pride and, Pride and prejudice uh, and the sound of music <laughs> really english movies uh she loved it a lot, but then uh, she started with getting um, the disease Alzheimer, um, and uh, that was really difficult. But uh, it taught me a lot about this illness. And um, um, the first time she was really good with um, acting, um, that she didn't. She it looked like that she didn't have the illness because she didn't want to show up that she was ill, of course, to other people and. Um, I still found a connection with her, but it was more difficult um, because it's your grandmother, and um, it's more it's more close, and it's more it's more um, it's in a certain way also more difficult. I think more confrontation. Uh, and while I was um, my, my grandmother had a lo- really long time Alzheimer, I think over over twelve or thirteen years, uh, so she was still a long time in my life, but. Um, in my study, I felt like first I have to work with kids, but after working with kids, I felt like, no, um, I don't want to work with kids. It's, <laughs> I love them, but, but not to work with. Um, so after uh, I did some co- colleagues for children uh, in the child's care, I then started with an other college for uh, elderly care. And I became an activity teacher. How they call that here in the Netherlands? I'm, I'm not sure. That's in the United States the same name. Pretty much. Um, yeah, but it means like that you're you're working in groups, uh, and most of the time in groups in elderly care, and um, sometimes in individual groups, and give uh, activities to elderly. And um, I had a really nice time, uh, but I felt like mm, it's not really really what I wanted. I want to. I want to put more attention on the individual, indi- individual, um, individual. Sorry. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Great individual um, people, uh, because you can you can have a group of people together, but you never can give them a, enough attention, and you don't really know what they think and what they feel and what they need if you have them in a whole group. And that's where I felt like okay. I, I I have to do it more. I, there must there have to be more. But um, I decided to stop 
to, to stop for a moment uh, because I felt still a little bit young. Uh, I was then in my 20, I think I was 21. And I decided then to go to the United States. <laughs> and I took a break. And I um, had a really wonderful uh, time in the United States. I traveled a lot. And um, I was an au pair there for, an, uh, for another seven months in Seattle. And um, after I came back from a wonderful and traveling um, trip, I found out that I wanted to study, study for art therapy. Um, and uh, I started art therapy in Nijmegen on the university. And there I felt like, really, yeah, this is what I can use for uh, the elderly. Um, this is more in individual <laughs> I hope that, <laughs> I think I can't change it anymore this this dwarf it's close enough <laughs> okay great and um and yeah I find I found another way to to connect with people and it's a really beautiful way because you can use music and art and um acting um and you don't have to talk about problems uh but you can use the uh, the f- you can use this um, creativ- crea- creativity um, to to get people somewhere, to connect them in a different way. And um, I, um, I get my degree after four years. Um, it was really difficult to find a job in the Netherlands because it was in the time that we had a recession, recession, recession in that time. Um, but then I started like a freelancer and that's what I still do. Um, I worked in a lot of um, um, places, um, uh, uh, private um, private care, and that's a lot more personal, a lot more personal uh, than uh, the regular uh, care here. And so, uh, yeah, I have many, many, many experience. I did a lot. Uh, I, yeah, I, I worked a lot last years, and um, yeah. I, I really want, yeah, I think that's my story <laughs> about the elderly. I think, I think I lost, you asked me actually who I am, but I think I started already about my <laughs> love for elderly care. That's okay. We have to get there somehow. Right. So when you're in the private care, mm-hmm. my mom was very creative, but I found trying to use art just frustrated her, which frustrated me. Yeah. And I don't know if it was because we started too late in the disease or I was doing it wrong. (laughs) I don't think I was doing it wrong, but part of the problem was her visual processing. What her eyes saw just got all scrambled in her head. So when they were coloring inside the lines, she had a very difficult time determining inside lines or outside lines, and it just frustrated mm-hmm. her. So I stopped trying that because it wasn't working. We did leaf rubbings. What else did we try? Very leaf simple rubber? things. Yeah. You put a leaf under the paper and then you draw oh, over yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> it just, it, she just didn't seem to connect to the creativity that she had. I mean, she, yeah. she did sewing, woodworking, baking. Oh, wow. What else did she do? Painting. And wow. all of that, I could not find a way to help her tap back into that. So is that probably, in your opinion, because we, I, she was very far into Alzheimer's when I started yeah. trying these things. Do we need to start as early as possible so they maintain some of those connections well it's always difficult to say what is a good what is a good um which one do you want to use um um but it is yeah it is good to start so so early as possible but uh when you have a when you're farther away in your um in your alzheimer or in your dementia um it, it is always it takes a long time to find to find uh, to find out what will what will fit and what will not fit. Um, but I think you try a lot. I mean, that's really good that you didn't stop by only one time. That's what I see most of the time. People will give a group 
activity and they think like, oh, they don't like it because they don't give a reaction. But you need to have a lot of patience, passion, um, to take, to try it. And all every step is already a step. Um, so yeah, I think you did really well there. I, um, I only didn't understand what she said, why she didn't like it. What was, what was the case of that? Um, she, it was, it had to do with her eyes. She couldn't see it really well. Ah, okay. That, yeah. That's of course more difficult. Yeah. That was a and lot I, of it. And she was always afraid of making a mistake. Oh, but that is really an artist. That's that's how you have that's our artists. I mean, artists, most of the artists who I know are always thinking, oh, is it good enough? That's that is true. And she thought I was her best friend. She forgot that I was her daughter, which happened. Oh, that's really hard. I suspected it before I got confirmation that that was true so it didn't hit me as hard as other people i guess yeah. other people aren't aware that that's likely to happen and i knew that it was very likely and i was pretty sure she had forgotten who our what our relationship was she didn't forget me she just no. forgot how i was related and being a best friend is pretty good so it didn't it didn't bother me much but she had a bit of formality between the two of us that I yeah. think she might not have had if she knew that I was her daughter. So sometimes I think that was a barrier. Yeah. I wish I had tried like um, frosting a cake or cup oh, yeah. you know, this because that's almost impossible to do wrong. You just tap it on there and then you eat it. <laughs> and oh. she might have she might have liked that better, but. It, that's that's a big mess to get involved with before well i guess i could have done the frosting it's one thing i just kind of thought about while we were talking i should have tried that one because then you have something to eat and if it doesn't look good it's gone yeah that's a really good thing but but uh yeah that's a well that's a good way because but you can do that also in art therapy you also can i know exactly what kind of I can do if if I had your mom there. I mean, if it became to only art, um, you can um, um, you can use all different uh, pencils, um, and you can already think like, oh, if someone finds it difficult, uh, does it have to be perfect? Um, you just should see it like a challenge and give them all different pencils so that it is almost impossible to make it perfect, and then um, and then and then. Um, you will see how they react on it, but it is always really difficult. Um, and I think you can't change someone in that age anymore in that way. Um, but there is always a way to 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 find um, possibilities. And I was wondering, did she also like music? She did. I also struggled with that one. When I've had the most success when I thought about music that her mom played when I was a child. And then I could get oh, yeah. her to engage in the care home. They played a lot of music and I think she just mm -hmm. tuned it out, like ignored it. Yeah. But what she really liked when she was, when I was growing up. So when she was a younger adult, I guess is the right term. She listened to talk radio and yeah. talk, talk shows on TV. So I really, oh, no. really should have played her more of my podcasts because yeah. I think she would have liked that, but I was always hesitant because I was afraid that she would realize that we were talking about her sometimes or it just, I wasn't sure how she'd react. And so I was, I should have played her something. Occasionally I would yeah. play, I think I played her one and it was okay, but most of them are too long because her attention didn't last very long. It was long. really short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, it's a really good thing. Old music from, from, from when she was a kid or when you was a kid is always better music than um, in, in compared with new music. 
Um, and also in that way, you, you never, you always have to ask family. That's also a really important thing to work with Elry to ask family um, what was their favorite music or what was their favorite food or what did what did they do and what was their old job. Um, it's so important information to find a little bit more out of what people like and especially when people has dementia. It's a really you really have to search. Uh, for opportunities and it will help you to get some extra information and I knew a woman we had a woman uh, and she was really far in her dementia but she had uh, she was always an artist and um, we we made art with her and it was incredible we couldn't believe no one couldn't believe that she still was growing um, that she was still she couldn't talk anymore she slept the most of the time time uh, during the day and she still made fantastic art with her pencil. So um, this was really an example to show up that it is still possible. Uh, but this was a woman who already had a background in the art. So that made maybe the difference. Yeah, I think what you were saying, you know, to find out what their job was. She she raised my sister and I. I really think I should have tried the baking. But she still even, I had her break apart peppermint candies to sprinkle on top of a Christmas cake. And she yeah. still was very concerned about doing it wrong. And it was like, that, uh. that was, it, it was frustrating, but it also kind of hurt my heart because it's like, just smash the candy and sprinkle. You can't do it wrong. Yeah. I mean, not really. And it's still going to taste good. If one side of the cake has more candies and then the, it's like, it's all fine, but I could never, get her to relax and just enjoy it. She always wanted to help. Can I, how can I help? How can I help? As she always said, if she was at my house and it was like, she didn't understand, just go sit over there and talk to somebody else. Let me finish this stuff. I tried to find ways like things that she could do that you couldn't screw up. And she's still worried yeah. about making a mistake. And what, what I'm, I'm curious about it is that was that, was she who she was her whole life? Was she always making her response? She did it good enough. She didn't do it good enough. Or was it something that came up when she get, became more ill? I think I think it got worse when she got ill. Because I know oh. growing up, it never felt that whatever I did was good enough for her or my dad. So she must have also felt that way. And it just got worse with the disease. That'd be yeah. my guess. So she, and she probably knew always also that she was ill. Well, you never know because, uh, well, we know never know because we don't know what's playing up in her mind. But I think that in, if you feel like um, that you can't say any, anything anymore, um, there will be a part of frustration inside of you. So, and I don't know, or she was, a, or she was thinking a lot, but if, if you're thinking a lot in your mind, it became became bigger and bigger, and especially if you can't if you can't take it out of you, if you can't say it anymore, yeah. And then and in that way, it's really good that you tried to find still opportunities to make contact with her, where she maybe get a chance to get it out of her mind. Well, we we had the most success with going to the park and watch children play. Oh, really? She loved that. Yeah. Yes, oh, it that's was great. Yeah, that's what we ended up doing. Because it caused no frustrations for her, and she loved it. But she frequently, somewhat frequently, would make a comment that her mind didn't work so well anymore. And yeah. I was never sure if she was actually aware of the fact that her mind didn't work quite well, or if it was just one of those sayings, like, People will say, oh, I'm going crazy, when they're not really going crazy. <laughs> they're just, <laughs> life is chaotic. They use crazy instead of chaotic, which is typical, but I, I never, sometimes she would say things, you know, she would just say, oh, my mind just doesn't work very well anymore. And it'd be like, hmm, you think, <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know. Uh -oh. I never said that to her, but I would say, oh, we all have days like that or some, you know, something so that she wouldn't feel like I agreed with her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's really good. I mean. There are there were so many situations where people ask me or ask the children, did you saw my mother? I, I'm looking for my mother. And 
there are several ways how to react on that. I mean, some people will say like, uh, uh, yeah, your mother, I saw her two hours ago. Or someone else will say like, your mother, you're in your 80s. Your mother's not still alive anymore. Um, but they say always, I, I mean, I, I teach myself to, to always talk with them um, in a way that their mother is still there because it's a really, really hard confrontation to all the time say that they are not right and you give them a really bad feeling. Uh, so I yeah. think you did right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, she yeah. would always ask about her husband, meaning my dad. Have you seen my husband lately? Always yeah. that tone of voice. And I never reminded her that he was gone because I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to remind yeah. her. And so I just made up stories. Oh, yeah, I saw him as I came in. Oh, he was yeah. at the meeting we were at. I think he's having lunch with a friend. I mean, it, That's she just phrase, needed yeah. to know that that he wasn't going to be upset if we left or she yeah. was, it was it was just typical. So yeah. if somebody wanted to start trying to use art with their loved one, how would you how would you recommend they go about trying various things? Like how would you how should they start so they can be successful? Hopefully, well, art therapy is and well, we use art therapy in a big uh, in a big world. Uh, world actually, it's called creative therapy. That's what I studied, and uh, well, what I said, we used music and art and acting. Um, but if we if we only special specialized on art, um, it is still you never know or 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 someone is interested in it, but you can use many, many um, different things to make art. And um, it is actually, it's also, yeah, it's important how some or someone likes to do something because that is already a really big thing to ask uh, someone who has uh, dementia and, and especially where they are in a dementia because if they know that they are ill, they feel like, well, what are you going to do with me? I don't want to do an activity. So uh, I have a really good example from someone who was, uh, this was actually not an, this is not an art therapy uh, example, but it is a really lovely example. I have to say it was uh, a woman. She was um, really, she was kind of famous in Netherlands and um, she uh, was in her beginning of Alzheimer and her family uh, couldn't make contact with anymore with her because she closed the door and she didn't want to have anyone in the house. And their family made a lot of worries and they didn't know how, what to do with her um, because they, she needed help. And then one of my colleagues, she, um, uh, she made a plan up that because this woman was an, a famous uh, singer, she then... Um, um, uh, desi uh, decided that it was maybe a good idea that she was going visiting this woman and ringing the door on the door and telling her that she was looking for a good teacher to give her sing uh, sing sing lessons. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so um, she then came in a beautiful dress and uh, a nice hair and makeup, and she uh, and then uh, she oh, and she rang on the door and uh, told the lady, yeah. Uh, that she came for the sing lessons and the lady was like, oh, oh, that's really interesting. Well, I'm, I, I'm a really good singer. So, so it was with acting where she get her in and uh, she um, became in no time in, uh, in uh, uh, her carer. carer. Um, and she played the whole act with her and she, and they sing together. And, um, and the woman felt like that she really was doing something something and that and that the other person needed at her and um it's the way how you um how you make contact with elderly people and even in their alzheimer's they really feel like they're really sensitive for things and i think that you never have should say okay here is your paper here are the pencils and good luck with it you really <laughs> have to <laughs> yeah because that's what i see also Many times that people think like, oh, these are children. You can give them a color book and you give them some colors and they will do the work. That is not how it will work. So I think you need a lot of patience and um, you have to give them, them also examples, make something by yourself or do it together also. Um, start together on a paper, one on the other side, the other. If you have a big paper, 
you can do together and work and um, see also try to do things try to do things out uh, see how another how she will like it if you're drawing in on her side if you're saying like this is your side on the right side and this is my side on the left side but you can also make a little bit in um, joke and try to go on her side see or she likes that yes or no these are little examples uh to to trigger people a little bit to to make art together i wonder if that would have helped my mom we did together but separate paper so i should have tried bigger paper nobody suggested that before so that's that's a new one for everybody yeah and it definitely needs to be fun i can think of things i don't think my mom would have participated but i bet you some of the other residents in the care home might have enjoyed where you put uh watercolor paint in a squirt gun and squirt yeah. it on the paper i think she yeah. i think some of them might have liked that she probably would have been concerned that it would make too much mess but it would have been fun i should try that because i think it'd be fun <laughs> Yeah, and I think also um, if you don't want, if you don't, if you want to try to don't make it something because otherwise you get this uh, perfection inside of her, you can try just this kind of things like also you can you can put a stroller stroller in. Um, I'm not sure what the English word is. Echoline, echoline, um, alcohol. Um, no, not alcohol. No, <laughs> no. Um, this is a color, uh, a kind of oil, but it is really thin uh, color. Um, you can put stroller inside. It's actually you can do it also oh, with water. Alcohol color. inks, maybe. And you can blow them. Yeah, and then you you can, yeah, you can blow them, and then you they will start all creation because of the blowing on the paper, and you almost can't make something of it because it is more by accident what it will be. And with alcohol inks, if you don't like it, you can keep adding more until you like it. That's what yeah. I've learned. <laughs> I, I yeah. use al alcohol inks for making greeting cards or backgrounds. Oh, nice. Yes, it's oh, fun. Nice. It's messy. Yes. I need to get yeah. back to that. I use yeah. ink too, but the that would be fun. Just blow on it. You could put the ink on the paper and just have them blow. Yes. And then they... See, I've learned all these things, but... I can't try them with mom anymore, but hopefully other people can try them with their loved ones. See, yes, yes. I, I struggled to find something that would tap into her sewing because yes. she did that the longest. And she did yeah. that as a young teenager. And so I think she might have been able to do something with it, but that's very visual. And so I never tried. Because I never knew what I could ask her to do. So that would have been another, maybe just cutting the fabric. I'm just not yeah. getting all these ideas. <laughs> but that's the uh, whole point of these conversations is to get ideas to share for somebody else that might have a similar situation that I did with mom, where she was yeah. too worried about making it perfect or doing it right. And I hated that. I hated she felt that way. Do you have yeah. um other art therapy story that's really touching? Oh yeah, I think I have my many. Um well I, I actually learned also that um well we get already a lot of lessons in um the last times, I think it's the most of the time in the news that when you give a headphone with music in the uh to people with dementia, it gives um you 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 have a better connection with them after the time. So it's really wonderful how it works. It's the same like with exercise. It's really important for people with those um, illness um, because they uh, you will you will see it if you do exercise every day with them. And most of the people don't like it, but really, what I really really love to do is um, balloon. Um, what's the word? Balloon tennis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so so they all get a racket and they get a balloon. And they have to screw the balloon up, up to each other. And they really, uh, it's so wonderful to see that in a group, they really like to do to do that as a really favorite activity. Um, but you have to be always careful because some people are really too strong um, and other people are too, too soft. 
but um, it's it's in comparison with a ball a totally other experience because the balloon is balloon is staying up in the air and it gives a kind of magic feeling. And after that time, you feel like that people are more connected. It's the same like how, when we are doing exercise, um, we feel like also better. After, I mean, I have that experience after after uh, in compare with doing nothing. It's always better to do something. From movements and um i have i see that also with music um i play the piano by myself and i uh also um there was a really beautiful piano in in one of the private houses and um when i played piano music um people always get uh happy with that and it felt like they they became in another world they they they, they are not thinking of other problems or thinking of other thoughts or and uh, they are they go in yeah they go in a kind of magic in, in, and they enjoy that music on that moment and even if they don't like classic music or or i i love to play soundtracks uh, for movies they never heard from it at all but because it was so slow music it um it gives them a really relaxed feeling and uh and that was always a good thing when people and, um because it is we, we i worked in a private house where you had on one side uh people without um dementia and in the other side you had to take an elevator you can became in a totally other world with people with dementia but we ask our each other always uh what do you like more and we always liked the the side from the dementia people because they those people are more of course, it was really busy, and of course, it's it's uh, uh, heavy to work with all these different people. It was always more lively. Um, in the other side, it was more quiet, and there were more um, little conflicts because um, there are a lot of people who want to be on herself or they need individual um, help, but they are not really like sitting in a group because they feel like no i i have my own life and i i don't I, I like to have a little conversation but not to sit there all day uh with other people and on the other side uh of the house it is a really lively situation there everywhere people are asking help and it's also really funny uh um of course it's not it's 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 really sad the illness but it's also there are so many Funny situations from elderly people who find each other or were walking around together in the garden, and also working with with plants was also something what I like to do. What I saw what people like to give them something in their hands to work, go in the earth with with your hands or with um, hand cloths. Nature is something that is so important. Even people who are so far away in a dementia, uh, if you show if you show them the nature by the window. And you you tell them, tell them a little story about some memories that you what you have or or about actually you can start already a story about what you see there what you can what you see there and yeah there are so many ways to try to connect people with this. I have an interesting story that's nature related. I took the pots for seedlings for planting the seeds. And had my yeah. mom help. That's what with, it is, yeah. Yeah, the seed. They had a beautiful garden courtyard that they could go out into. And we sat out there and we were planting the seeds. But I needed to make sure that I had enough. I put enough seeds in the pot that I could use all the seeds and all the pots. It was math. <laughs> Not my yeah. thing. Yeah. And so just... For conversation, I said, oh, there's five times I was doing multiplication or trying. And this one resident who was Irish by birth, but lived here in the States, she did not speak English. It was mostly mumble and yeah. Gaelic or I'm not sure Gaelic is Scottish, but it was not English words. It was you never, it was just always, I'm blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I said, now what is a uh, five times 12 or it was a five times 13. Then th something I can't do in my head. She walked by 60 or what? She gave me the correct answer. And I was like, 
How I've is never this heard, possible? <laughs> I was like, I've never heard a clear word. And she she heard the question and she got the answer right. And she spoke it 100% clearly. I was just like, just clever, I guess shocked. Yeah, yeah, it was just amazing. I was just like sitting there with my mouth hanging open. Like I couldn't even do that. I think my brain is okay. Usually it's okay. But yeah, you know, it just it connected is. with her. And then she walked away and I'm like, okay, well, come back if I got any more math questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I recognize that absolutely. Uh, it's it's um, what they play a lot of quiz, uh, quiz uh, questions uh, about the early about the early years, about the nature, about all kinds of subjects. And um, you will see that a lot of people can give the right answers, even if they don't talk anymore that much, or even if they can talk. Uh, and also the same with reading. Sometimes um, most of the people can't read anymore, but sometimes um, uh, if you really try to focus on it and you give, give them an, an iPad where you can make the letters be a lot bigger, they can sometimes say in whole sentence and you will surprise like you think like how is this possible? But I think focusing on the right activities is a really good thing in, in this. And I actually, uh, when I started in the beginning, I we had a lot of time. I mean, in the private houses, it's always like there is more time for, for the elderly. Well, that's why they, where they pay also for the That's why it's private care. Um uh, I know I have to say that even there, there is not enough attention to, to give. Um, and that makes it always so hard um, to work in an elder, in, in a, in an, um, in a house because you always want to give more attention than you can. But actually in that time, in the beginning, there was a lot of time that just started with the organization. And uh, um, I started a, a walking group and uh, in the end I walked uh, uh every day um with uh, eight elderly and myself and two volunteers um or in the streets and we had so many uh, many people watched us always and it, we had so much fun we had many people who walked with a walker and um people in a wheelchair and um it was really a daily activity but people liked a lot and all kind of stories started and people made friends together and it was a really amazing time in that time and that it was possible. Um, it was, and, and we then, we sometimes decided to stop somewhere and eat and eat ice cream. And um, these are really, really good moments. But I remember and where I have many pictures from. Um, uh, and uh, you're happy that you can help on that moment. You can do something so that they can forget all their problems and all their thoughts and, all the sadness what they have inside of them and it's always good to take them outside also um even when it's winter but most of the people are not really interested i mean i don't know how it's in i know i think it's in the united states the same like it's really cold in the winter time right where i live not as much no it it gets to me it's very cold but we don't get snow Oh, so, okay, that's better. So it does not get freezing here. Oh, that's but better. it gets very, very hot in the summer. So the winter still feels really, really cold to me. <laughs> and I like <sighs> it warm. So, and my mom loved it warm to hot. So we didn't like winter, but I did. Let's see. We taught, we went to a local park and watched the kids, and it was autumn. And it was nice. It was, the sun was very warm. The breeze was kind of cool. And we talked about going to the park with a thermos of hot cocoa. Yes. And we never ended up doing that. Partly because it's, we haven't had a lot of rain either. I don't know why we didn't do that. That was, she, she passed away last year, right at the start of the pandemic. Which oh, was no. good because we wouldn't have been able to go watch children, and I wouldn't have been able to go see her, so that would have been awful. So that oh, yeah. was a blessing, but you know there was a lot of things I was trying with her, but it just that didn't happen because she had more days that were hard, and mm -hmm. she wouldn't cooperate with me. You know, just she would just get very. 
I, you know, I don't want help. And, you know, she would need help yeah. to get into the car, a little help to get out. And it just got really hard. So we we would go from the memory care part of the community around the building to the assisted living community and have lunch and visit with other Great. older adults. And that that was okay. She loved to talk. Oh yeah. <laughs> but she would I know. In the last couple of months she would say sentences that were very clear English words and it yeah. sounded like a very grammatically correct sentence, but there was no context. So people would look at me like what is she talking about? And I'd be like, I have no idea. Just it yeah. just was it was the weirdest thing because I always tried to find a way to try to understand what she was trying to tell me, but yeah. it was not, it was not usually successful at that. So we've got, I think the one thing that I've learned from helping care for my mom and from many of my guests is because they age backwards it's okay to do more fun, playful kinds of therapies. Yeah. Walking, you know, going to the park. I mean, I might have gotten her to go down the slide, except that going up the ladder would have been hard. Yeah. But she might have played ball with, I know she would have played ball with the kids because she did that with one young um, toddler, two-year-old, who came to oh, the residence yeah. to visit another family member. I think if you make it as fun and joyful, that might help. I think I yeah. was always, always trying too hard. And it was, I think that's one of the reasons she was resistant. Because I oh, was, she felt that. She felt that probably. probably. Yeah. You, you <laughs> really have to be, you really have to be into the activity. Uh, I, I agree because, um, but if you are too much in, if it's, it's, if it looks like you're not really, uh, you're doing it more to 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 get her involved. She probably will felt like the difference in it, or probably she was thinking, "You never do that with me." <laughs> <laughs> That's probably but, true. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and and it is always more easy for someone extern to do it uh, when you when you don't know the family. Um, uh, I, I I got many stories from people who said like, "Oh, my grandfather is always so." Uh, and lively after you're visiting and he's always talking a lot but he is actually not talking with me that much so what are you doing different and but I, th I think it has to do with the fact that it is a lot more safe on that time that I don't know them at all and um, and they actually they don't remember me well most of the time they remember me but people who are in a dementia you actually start every day again with, with telling who you are um, but one thing is, I find I always think like that they know more than we think that we that they that they know. They ex they don't express it, but I don't know. I feel like always there is something. There is so much more, and you have to find the right pattern sometimes. I think to find out to to get that connection with those people, and also humor. Humor is a humor, really yeah. good yeah. It's a really good way to. To um to connect with people, um I I actually I love to use my humor and um I uh, also sometimes when it is so uh, kind of sad, there's a kind of sadness in in the room and and people are a little bit discussing with each other and they feel like okay there have to be something ha they need something they have to be something happen they need um uh they need there have to be, yeah, I, I'm not sure how to explain it, but I felt I'm then being really spontaneous and going to talk, to take a walk away and walk like an elderly person. And they started with giggling a lot. They, they, they can't believe that I can transmit, then I can transmit myself to an elderly person and be totally in that role. And they start, they, they find it really fantastic. I always say like, oh, you have to go to the drama school. And um, it's that moment that you have to take them out of this negativity. And then for a moment they are, they forget everything. And then they are back by, um, maybe they need that little bit fun to go back a little bit in, 
in a positive uh, positivity or in a maybe in a reality also. Uh, so that's also a really good thing. Music, art, um, nature, um, yeah, um, you, your humor, humor, and also movies are good. Nature movies, uh, well, not too aggressive, but uh, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, there are so so many ways uh, to. Um, to get connection with elderly people. And actually I um, started it because that's how you met me. I think that's why, why you find me on Instagram, right? Um, I, I felt like um, I, I make art also by myself. And I first started with an uh, Instagram account um, um, where I made all different arts. But then I felt like I, I want to show the world um, how nice it is to work with elderly. And how can I do that? And then I felt like, you know what? I will start an Instagram account for only for elderly and people who are interested in this group, group, but also people who are thinking about working with those people and also um, clients probably um, or family from, from elderly. And so now, so now I started Sincere. I made all different stories. Um, I draw all different stories. Uh, about the experience, what what I had with elderly, and um, also how how elderly can live their life. I met uh, I met in a big worldwide traveling two years ago, and I met so many elderly, and I saw them all in a different way. And the last years I lived in Spain, where I'm going tomorrow back to, and there I, I there I see like elderly are all with their family. They don't put elderly people in in an, in an, uh, in a house. Um, so there you learn also a lot, um, and that's something what I want to show the world: how we can look in a different way to elderly, and um, and how we can try to change the elderly care a little bit better, so that we will watch it, the elderly care in general in a different way, and that we are not seeing it anymore. Like when you're getting old you have to go to an elderly house and that's it. But that you're seeing it more like we are all getting older and we should see it more like not a separated um, a separated person, but someone will have to come in the hole. We are all human. I mean, we all have to be, we have to accept each other. And so we have to watch also to elderly in this way. We actually should not call them elderly. I still don't know how to call them. But I think it's better to don't uh, to change the world a little bit better to make. Um, yeah, does that make sense? What I said there, yes. you, I think you understand so, what I mean. I do. <laughs> yeah. So the what is the Instagram account for the art, the elderly art? Um, that's ML Active for the elderly. Okay, I'll make sure that people can find that. And then you said what really touched me was to connect with them, we need to find a way to take away some of the negativity. And I think yeah. that is a good mindset, a good way to think about it going into helping care for somebody that's older, because that's that's such a wonderful way to to help them. I would yeah. read sometimes in the cold months, <laughs> I would read very short, funny stories to my mom and her friend. They would be nice. two, two to three pages maximum. Very, very short little stories. And they loved them. And they were short yeah. enough that they could keep up. And then yeah. about, about the time their memory was starting to drift, it was over. And we'd laugh. And then I'd ask, "Oh, do you want to hear another one?" And they always, I'd always read two or three, and then, then we had to move on to something else. But that was really, actually, a really enjoyable way to spend time with my mom was reading those those funny stories because then she relaxed, and she was yeah. easier to do th other things with. So, I think that might be a great place to to stop before yeah. I am in California and it is blowing a storm out today and oh, really? you have to yeah it's very very windy it's yeah oh, and wow. you have to get ready to go back to spain so i yes. appreciate this 
I hope everybody follows Maria Louise on Instagram so you can maybe pick up some more tips from her. She's very, very passionate about this topic. And every little improvement we can make to elderly care and Alzheimer's care is just one, one, one thing more people will know when it's when our, when we get older and we're recording this today is my husband's birthday. So we are getting yeah. older. <laughs> yes. <absolutely. laughs> you know, no, it's good to, to be aware from it. Yeah. So I appreciate this. It's, tremendously. it's not wrong. It's not no. wrong. It's, it's a good thing to get older. We all get older. My so. paternal grandmother lived to 103. So wow. I will live to 103. Yeah. And her wow. mind was good. Till the wow. till the very end, then it was yeah, not as good, but she did not have any dementias. Oh wow, that's that's really wonderful if that can be happening like what is yeah. that? 48 years more for me. <laughs> well, I think you have a new life there. <laughs> yep. I think you have much things to do. Well, thank yeah, you very I'm, much. Thank you very much me. for joining me. So well, it's er not too early for me, but the time difference between California and the Netherlands is kind of extreme. So I appreciate yeah. this tremendously. Yeah.